So in 2003, you ended up on MTV's MC Battle, right? Which you ended up winning, mm -hmm. getting $25,000 mm -hmm. and a record deal with Def Jam. Tell us about the process step by step when you first find out about it and then when you signed up. Well, my, my manager, once again, he, he did the same thing he did with making a band. He said, yo, I seen a um, uh, um, commercial on MTV for this for this battle. That's all he knew. He said, yo, go watch it all day. Because at that time, if you remember, you had to literally watch TV all day to see the same commercial. Like there was no just you just knew when stuff was happening. You had to just wait. So I remember watching MTV all day. I seen the commercial. Yo, if you think you dope, come to Mad you know, come to Times Square. So we went out there. We stood in line for 24 hours um, during that process. My manager, shout out to him, man. He was such a dope guy, man. Um, he's not my manager anymore, but he's like family. But he was so dope um, as, a, as being a part of my development as an MC because he would do things like like this. So he took the time while we were standing in that line. He was literally walking up to other MCs. I was just standing there with my headphones on, whatever it was I was doing. He was just like, I'll be back. Go take a walk. I wouldn't know what he's doing. I would watch, make sure he, all right, all right cool. Because he's a white guy, by the way. So the only white, white cat in this line with all these black dudes. So I, every time I, you know, just left my head a little and just make sure he, all right. So I would see him talking to people. And then he eventually walked over to me and was like, yo, you ready to battle? And I'm thinking he talking about where we going. I'm like, hell yeah. Can't wait to get inside. He like, nah. See them dudes up there, they ready for you. What you mean? He done, I don't know this, he done paid these dudes or whatever he done did. So I got like three, four dudes that want to battle me. Mind you, this is a long line with people around the world. So this gets us ahead in the line. So my manager was actually a genius. So people that's there, we're bored. We're bored, we're freezing. This is the middle of winter. People want to see something. They're like, yo, go ahead. They see it. They see my manager motioning me to come up. And people are literally telling me to go ahead and get in front of them. Like, man, go ahead. I want to see this. So I literally battle one guy, one guy, one guy. They, what they don't know is I'm dead broke. And all I got is raps. They don't know this. They don't know my mom died, my grandma died, my brother died. They don't know that my ammo is nothing but rhymes. I got a million raps. For every one rap you got, I got 10. They didn't know this. So I'm running through these guys. Next thing you know, we're at the front of the line. So 24 hours go by. Of like damn near standing in this line. We stand in line for literally almost 24 hours. We're standing there waiting. So the door is finally open. Now we excited. Bet. Next thing you know, the line, people in line start beefing with the cops. Now the cops are coming around. It's early morning. The cops are telling everybody make an orderly line. You guys are, you know, interrupting the traffic and blah, blah, blah. The rappers in line start beefing with the cops. Cops start beefing with the rappers. Cops start pepper spraying the rappers. The line breaks up. MTV comes out. They tell everybody, go home. So we wasted that whole time, all of them battles for nothing. They sent us home and told us to come back, I think, in a week. So we had to redo that process a week later. That's terrible, man. You must have been pissed. Hot. I was hot. Like, I was hot, man. I was on fire. Like, you just <laughs> don't understand. I was hot. I was hot. So, but what I did... I said, all right, I still got all of these rhymes. I wrote a few more rhymes. So now when we go back, the process is a little, it's a little quicker. And when we get inside, they, they have us. Um, first of all, we were at this place called the Roxy. And for those that are hip hop fans, the Roxy is where the legendary hip hop movie Beat Street took place. That's where they battled at. So they had us in there doing our um, impromptu battle. But it was against DJs and, and whatever personalities they had around. So. I believe I had to rap for maybe I think his name was DJ Chubby Chubb, if I'm not mistaken. And he was like, listen, battle me. This is how we meet. And I'm like, battle you? You're a DJ. He was like, yeah, if you can make me feel like insulted, I'll let you go forward to the next round. And I'm like, insulted? I'm looking at him like, all right, he's a little chubby. <laughs> yeah, I got some jokes. So I start going crazy. Next thing you know, he was like, oh, yeah, you fired. They let me through. So that was it. It was something so simple as just moving past that guy. Next thing you know, we got a MTV tryouts at MTV. So I think I battled maybe a total of five to seven times 
throughout the whole process. So then you, you wait, this is prior to you going against Locksmith, right? These are actual rounds or this is trial. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is actual rounds. Yeah, this is actual. So from the, the, those, that was the end of the tryouts with the DJ. I made it. So now I'm, we're in the building. So now they start doing the MC versus MC. They was just randomly mashing us up. So me and Locksmith was the very last one, but yeah, I had to go against quite a few MCs. It was a few that wasn't on camera. And then it was a few that was on camera, but I won everyone. I, I'm, I don't want to be cocky and say easily, but I won it easily because I had so many rounds. Like I think a lot of these guys, they kind of, it was a mismatch. I don't think nobody knew how hungry I was. Like I literally probably went to this battle with maybe a hundred rats, no exaggeration or, or more. So, but the problem was I exhausted every one of these rounds at that battle. When I say exhausted, every single bar freestyle, every trick that you, that, that I had, I used it. So by the time I got the locksmith in the last round, I was done. When I tell you I had no bars battling locksmith, when I tell you that I was freestyling, I have nothing prepared. That was all God. I, I get at the God, bro, and, and, and the fans, because I thought honestly he won. In my head, I said, yeah, he had a cleaner performance. I stumbled a little bit. He won. But what I didn't understand is during that process, MTV had started building a backstory for every artist in the battle. So on top of every battle of being there, they would show footage of the artists in their hometown. Like you said, my story and my mom and everybody passing. I think that struck a chord with the people and they kind of really built the backstory for me. So I think the people already had it in their mind that I was going to win. So I think it didn't even matter about me and Locksmith in the final round because they ended up giving it to me. And shout out to Locksmith. He's amazing. I, and that last round, yeah, I definitely didn't have no rounds for Lock. I'm going to be honest, man. I used every round I, I had at that point. Yeah, because, you know, it, that's funny that you said that you freestyled because I did feel like when when I was watching that part, I was like, yo, it don't really sound written right now. It sounds like he he actually coming off top right now. Yep. Literally, that's all I could do because I knew I said, all right, if this is the championship, see, in my head, I didn't want to win. I never went there to win. All I went there to do was get on TV and be famous. I just wanted to win one or two battles. I never cared about winning the battle. So even in that round, when it was time to announce the winner, I didn't care because I was like, yo, I'm on TV. I made this in the last round. I won. Even if I didn't win, I won. Like coming from where I'm from, man, I won. I'm good. So when they said my name. Is the winner, I had to, if you go back and watch the footage, I had to turn my head because it hit me. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I, I, I started crying on the spot. Like, yo, hold up. I just won. I'm signing a Def Jam. What the, hold up. What? Like, it took a minute to process. So, yeah, that, it was a crazy day, bro. It took a lot to even come down off that high. That was crazy. Now, Locksmith felt that it was biased because he was the only rapper from the West Coast, right? Mm hmm I don't think I don't think it was biased. I think Locke Locke is a dope MC, but I think what happened is Locke just was in a place. You know how they say you got to go where you were, where you where you appreciate it and not where you tolerate it. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing with with hip hop. I think you have to be in places that they appreciate what you do. Otherwise, you could be better than everybody, but if they don't appreciate you, <laughs> they don't care. So I think if that battle took place in L.A. where where Locke is from, I would have lost because. It just wasn't for me. They, they 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 didn't appreciate me. They appreciate a lot. But I think being as though we were in New York, I, I look and smell like New York. I got a, a backwards hat. I got on Timberlands. I look and smell like New York. I think it was just it just made sense. All right. He got a sad backstory. He's a dope MC. We can kind of relate to him. I think it was just more of a, a people related to me a little bit. more. But I think performance wise, I would even give it the locksmith in that battle. Because um, the people voted, right? It wasn't MTV that decided. Yeah. It was the people nope. that voted. The people voted. That's what let me know that I had did something special because the people voted. Got you. Wasn't one of the people that you battled, didn't they get disqualified? I think the girl, right? That was that was my homegirl, Knight. She was who they wanted to win. Like, I already, she was the person that everybody knew. Well, if they didn't know, I knew. that like, she was the one that everybody was gunning for. Like, she was like a female version of me. She had punchlines. She was witty. She was actually more witty than she was more witty than everybody. She had punchlines and she was a female. So she had like the trifecta going on. But like you said, she cursed. 
And I, I made her curse because I peeped at everybody she battled. They were battling her like she was a girl. They were spitting cute rhymes at her. Nah, from the day I met her and I knew how nice she was, every time we was chilling, it's, it's fucked up. She knows now. But I would make bars up just all the time. Like, even in conversation, I would just know, like, yeah, we friends and all that. But <laughs> I know you're a, you a problem. You're a problem. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to over-prepare. So I prepared so much for her that if you go watch, if you go type in Rain Man versus Night MTV, I went crazy. And that, like, she went crazy, but I went super crazy because I just had lines on lines. And I remember when I said some of the lines, I could see the insult on her face. She never had that in none of the battles. Mm. Nobody that she battled made her care. She kind of had the, the juggernaut vibe, like, I don't care about none of these guys. But every bar I said, I can see she getting, she getting pissed off. Now she getting aggravated. Now she can't. She can't stand still. Now she's moving. So now when she rap, she curse. What and did, I, I kind of felt it. I say, yeah, this is this is mine. I knew. What did she say? Because I've heard I heard in some of the other battles that you said bitch, right? I could have sworn you well, said bitch. Well, they told us a list of, yeah, they told us the list of curses that we can say. Like, they made it easy. They literally oh, say, wow. yo, you okay. can say bitch. Like, we, they gave us a chance to ask. All mm-hmm. right, so what can we not say? Can we say this? Can we? They made it clear. Don't say nigga. Don't say... You know, don't say nothing super crazy. That was that was it. So wow. I, I made sure I said, yo, can I say bitch? And it was like, yeah, it just depends on how you say it. I was like, all right, cool. And that I made sure that was the hardest hitting line. I think I said, um, I said, I'm ahead of you by like three classes. Either you the biggest bitch that's walking or I need glasses. Everybody fell out. I seen <laughs> the, the, the disgust on her face. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny that you said Jay is one of your biggest influences because I feel like during that time you kind of had that um that cadence like him, especially when before you rapped, you yeah. was like, okay, like the way that you said it. The okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounded yeah, we, like Jay. I think we I think for some reason we have a natural uh I have some type of we have some type of similar tone, but being a fan of him as much as I was growing up, I definitely studied the way he rhyme and I think I think I study hip hop so much that sometimes it bleeds into how I talk, like like deeper than rhyme. Like I start talking kind of the way that I rap. So I think over time, like you said, that okay, that that was just how I talk, but it still sounded like Jay. So yeah, I had to actually work hard to get away from that sound. Right, right. I can see it too. 